experiencing life with God or without God. And some people make the mistake by thinking, they're well, be, well, they're existing, they're doing fine. Uh, they don't believe in God. In fact, you know, they don't feel they need God because they're living. And they're, they're doing just fine. They got a job, they go to school, they got a good job. They have a family, they have children, they're happy. But my question to them would be this. Where does your breath come from? You say you can live without God. The fact of the matter is you are not living without God. Even though you haven't put your faith in God, the man to explain the existence of, of humanity and explain how we got here, why we're here, and all of that is really not complicated. <clears throat> It's as simple as asking a rhetorical question is where do your where does your breath come from? If you stop breathing, you stop living. Who gave that breath? Jesus, the Lord. The evolutionists they can't explain that. No. They can't explain anything invisible. They they do a very poor job and I say poor at trying to explain the existence of man by creating myths and creating uh, falsehoods that have never been proven, theories that have never been proven. That's how pathetic it is. But that's a result of somebody who doesn't want to put their faith in God or the Bible. But going back to our existence with God and what do we want to experience in this life? God made us. He created us. We're the creation. He has a plan for each one of us. He didn't create any one of us without a plan. He's yeah. got a plan for Amen. every one of us. Oh, I Just want remember, to know about He that. has it. We don't. Yeah. We're the creator. I mean, he's the creator. We are the creation. So he's got a plan. The only way to know about that plan is to know him yeah. and to walk with him. Loving each other. The Bible talks about the various forms of love. God's love is different than any other form of love. Oh, Daddy. We have it in us to love Daddy. on a human level because that's how God made us. We also have the capacity of, of hatred. We have the capacity of all the works of the flesh. Envy, jealousy, lying, deceit, dishonesty, covetousness. All of this is a potential expression in any one of our lives because we are all sinners the difference between adam and eve and us is that adam and eve chose from the beginning it was through adam that sin entered into the world when we're born into this world we weren't put into a garden we weren't created innocent and perfect without any um, background for sin we we're born sinners there's nobody that's not born a sinner even if they're young. Because then you'd have to say this. Okay, well, if they're not born sinners, then somewhere at some age they become a sinner. And that's not a biblical teaching. We are born sinners. Now, granted, infants, they don't know what they're doing. They can't willfully choose to sin. Nevertheless, they are still born sinners. That's why they need to be taught right from wrong. Because of that fact that they are sinners. Children must be taught right from wrong, good from evil, righteousness from unrighteousness. They must be taught God's way so they know the difference between trying to live this life your own way and living this life God's way. Mm. So that's the difference between Adam and Eve and all the rest of us. Amen. Okay? <clears throat> um, we know that one <laughs> killed the other, and that was also a result uh, of sin, uh. that all of us are in need of a Savior. We're all born sinners. Jesus came to save sinners. He said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. He said, I came to call sinners to repentance. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And the biggest and most, the most famous verse is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only <laughs> begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but that the world through him might be saved.
always need God every day of our life, which prompts us to be like Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That was a lifetime decision. That was a once in a lifetime decision, but it was a decision that he was never going to change. I've heard some people say, well, I, I've decided I'm going to do this. And then later they change their minds. Oh, I'm going I'm to go do that. When you make a decision to follow Jesus Christ, Jesus said, he that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. When you make a decision for Jesus Christ, let it be your first and last decision to follow Jesus. Amen. You don't have to think about that again. You make a decision to follow Jesus, it's a lifetime decision. You stick with it. You move on. You endure all hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You never look back. Amen. Don't ever look back. There's nothing back there. What are you looking back for? What are you looking back to the sinful life? Looking back to the sin? Looking back to all the garbage? All that's in the rear view mirror is garbage. Amen. You look back. That's right. Look ahead and follow Jesus and keep your eyes on Jesus. Paul the Apostle put it this way. <coughs> looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Friend, there's only one way to go. That's straight ahead with Jesus. Amen. 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 So let us do that together. We each have a race to run. We each have a path to walk. Wait. This is baby. Hmm? It's okay. Leave him alone. It's okay, Gabriel. Come here. It's okay, Gabe will tell, will tell mommy that he is a peanut to come. Give, give him some napkin, then? Yeah. <clears throat>